Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert trainer will be talking about domain 3 that is deploy operationalize machine learning solutions. So let's get into the video. Okay, so we have for domain 3 which is deploying and operationalizing machine learning solution. Okay, so let's take a look at them. First selecting compute for a model deployment, all right? So we need to, as data scientists, we have to analyze the models and select the appropriate compute target for model deployment, okay? So this is where whether you are going for inference cluster, okay? Or during training, you want to go for compute cluster and so on, all right? Then deploying a model as a service. So of course, the whole point of me doing the whole thing of training, preparing data is so that we can train a model and that model can be deployed and can be put to use, all right? So again, who can use it, all right? So basically there are, via different endpoints, we can let the model be consumed, all right? So either a web service that is hosted in the cloud or an IoT module for integrated device deployments and so on. So we have web service endpoint, we have pipeline endpoints and real-time endpoints, okay? So these are all nothing but how your model is going to be consumed once it is deployed, right? And uh, so you have, again, if it is a real-time use, then you go for real-time inferencing. And once you have done the inferencing, then you're going to deploy and you're going to have real-time endpoints to consume that, okay? If you're going to do for batch, then you go for batch inferencing and also batch endpoints, okay? So the only difference is if, as you know, real time means as, as soon as the data is captured or generated in the source, you are taking the data and doing the analysis and making the prediction using your trained model. All right. Batches, you capture the data, but then at a scheduled time, you run your batch pipeline. All right. Then at that time, let's say, as we have seen in the lab, we have work with a hospital scenario where we capture all the patients who came for a test for that particular day throughout the day and all the data is captured but we are running the model only in the night okay we are doing the prediction only in the night at 10 o'clock let's say we schedule and run it then we get the prediction for let's say if 100 people came for a test for that day we are running prediction and having the prediction for all the 100 people. So it is more of a batch processing, okay? So you have a couple of options and again, you can use them and again, when we go for uh, deployment, then we can choose whether we want to go for Azure Container Instance or Azure Kubernetes, okay? Again, this is a decision depending on how you want to use this, what kind of workload it is going to be. If anything simple and not so heavy workload required, then you can go for Azure Container Instance. But if you want to go for enterprise level solutioning for the deployment, okay, then you can go for AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service. Okay, then managing models in Azure Machine Learning. Okay, so we can also monitor the model, all right? So after we have deployed them into a production as a service, we want to monitor its track usage and explore the request it processes. Okay, so this gives us an idea whether our model is really being consumed by anybody or not. If consumed, then how is the usage, okay? Why it's important? Because then we know whether we need to do anything to our model, meaning we need to retrain and redeploy the model. Is it required? Okay. Another criteria we looked at is we monitor the data drift. As we talked about NF during the sessions, basically, if you are building a model today and it is able to do the prediction accurately or it meets your performance expectation and you are using it, you are putting it to use. Six months later, it can still predict, but the predictions are not really close to the reality, okay? So that means there is something wrong. Over a period of time, something has changed. Maybe the context to your scenario has changed a little bit, all right? Maybe some other external factors are affecting 
maybe over a period of time, things have evolved and changed and your model also need to evolve and change. So we need to continue this, okay? So the best way to evaluate is, okay, we have the baseline data set and target data set, which is the baseline data set is nothing but the original data set that you have used to train your model and deploy your model initially. Your target data set is the new data. And so you're running both and comparing, okay? If it is, if the difference is not so much, that means your model is still relevant. If the difference is big, then you know that you probably need to retrain this model with a new context of data and deploy them. Okay, so this is an important thing we need to do after we have done the project and deployed. This is an ongoing thing we need to monitor. Okay, so let's take a question quickly. All right. Okay, so it's B. So we collect the new data in a separate data set and create a data drift monitor. Okay, so let's do the next couple of things. So we talked about batch inferencing and also real-time inferencing. So in machine learning, batch inferencing is used to apply a predictive model to multiple cases asynchronously. So as we talked about the hospital, that is for batch inferencing. And when we use the code, we are going to use initialize and run. And to create a pipeline, we are going to use the parallel run step, right? So again, that's something concept-wise, nothing much. You need to take note of what method is being used, right? So you're creating a batch inferencing pipeline. So of course, as we have seen, the answer is B, which is parallel run step, okay? So another important thing is our designer. Like I said, for a beginner, the two features that you can take away from this Azure machine learning is one is automated ML, the other is using the designer to create your pipeline, okay? So again, here we are talking about deploying it and creating an inference here, okay? With a web service input that is coming and you are giving the output in the web service output. Again, you are creating an inference pipeline here that will do the job of predicting on the new data, okay? So let's take a question. We use Azure Machine Learning Designer to create a training pipeline for a classification model. What must you do to do before deploying the model as a service, okay? So we need to, of course, create an inference pipeline from the training pipeline. That is the first thing we do as we go ahead and deploy that, okay? So I'm going a bit faster because the concepts are already, we have discussed, yeah. Okay, so the next one is implementing pipeline by using the Azure ML SDK, okay? So we have seen that in terms of the common kind of steps that we use is Python script step. Here, it runs a specified Python script. Then you have data transfer step, and then you have data bridge step, and you have ADLA step and then you have parallel run step, okay? So you can have a look at it here and your data transfer step you can use. It uses the Azure data factory to copy data between data stores, okay? Again, Azure data factory is a, a service, all right? In a typical data landscape, when you want to move the data from different data sources, to a central repository, which we often call as a data warehouse. When we want to do that, we do something called ETL, extract, transform, load. The same way, your Azure's answer to the ETL is called Azure Data Factory. So in simple words, Azure Data Factory is an ETL tool, all right? So here we use that to copy the data between your data store, okay? So and to do that, we use this particular step, data transfer step, okay? So, of course, when you're moving the data in between, you keep them inside your pipeline data objects, okay? So that holds your data temporarily as it moves from one step to the other in the pipeline, okay? Let's look at the question. Okay, we're creating a pipeline that includes two steps. 
step one pre-process some data while step two uses the pre-process data to train a model what type of object should you use to pass data from step one to step two okay so which object that will hold the data temporarily it is b the pipeline data as we have just looked at okay so then we can apply the machine learning ops okay so we all probably have heard devops so what is devops in any development environment you have two teams that are working one team is called development team the other is called operation team the development team primarily focuses on writing the code bringing out the logic and translating the logic into the code testing the code and ensuring that uh, you know the code is performing the job whereas your operation team ensures all the other logistics around the development is taken care for example they come up with a schedule deployment monitoring managing all of that is done by the ops team so we need to get both the teams married so that they are in sync and they are able to work together because the nature of work that they do it has to be done as one team although two different teams are doing the job so there are devops practices that has been introduced to tie the gap in between to bridge the gap in between these two teams and to make them work seamlessly together so that is a devops concept now we are bringing in a new diamond not new dimension and an additional thing which is machine learning related workloads and task and everything so now we are combining all the three together okay so your ml ops or machine learning operation is nothing but it's based on your devops principles and practices that increase the efficiency of the workflow and the quality and the consistency of the machine learning solution so we bring our model and data rather than just the code which is usually come from your development team so once you bring them you plan you create you verify then you package okay what you want to deploy then once you have the package then you release them so this is what often we call as ci cd continuous integration and continuous okay and then we configure and we continue to monitor so this is basically the practice or the flow that happens in the devops world right so, so guys this was our expert and if in case you missed upon anything and you could not understand any of the technical keywords then we have something really special for you we have our free class on microsoft azure data scientist certification demo along with some question and answers that is dp100 and if you want to gain access to this free course then you just have to log on to k21academy.com forward slash dp 102 under this course you'll be learning about why to learn azure cloud and some of the amazing market trends for machine learning you'll be getting a certification roadmap you'll be working on real life demos as to how to create ml workspace in azure you'll be learning about training and deploying a classification model in azure and machine learning and what not so if you really want to enroll for this free course then all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash dp102. After that, you'll be seeing a page like this. You just have to click on book your free seat now and select your event date according to your availability. Enter your name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be getting this kind of page where you'll be seeing this kind of URL on your extreme right. Save that URL, add it to your calendars, and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, take care and keep learning.